what's up YouTube Drew Manchu here welcome to episode 6 of Drew Reviews gonna be reviewing some great books for you guys this week got to picked up a uh, really nice Marvel Legends action figure that we're gonna take a look at later and also going to be doing a preview of some of the issues that are coming out next week that I'm really looking forward to we're gonna go ahead and jump into the reviews and start off with Batman number five Batman number 5 is the final issue in the I Am Gotham story arc by Tom King and David Finch. Gotham and Gotham Girl are Gotham City's two newest metahumans, and Batman has taken them under his wing. Unfortunately, Hugo Strange and the Psycho Pirate have co-opted their minds, paralyzing Gotham Girl with fear and igniting a rage inside Gotham, turning him into a god-level murder machine. Batman's going to need to call in some favors to handle this one. Good thing he's got the Justice League on speed dial. Tom King ends this arc on a high note. He's made Gotham and Gotham Girl into sympathetic characters that are a legitimate threat to Batman while holding a mirror up to him, showing all the characteristics that make him a hero. The action is well paced, the cameos are great, and the reveal of how Gotham and Gotham Girl's powers work is both original and interesting. I definitely come out of reading this book wanting to know more about Gotham Girl and where things go next. David Finch's art here is solid for a bi-weekly book. Filled with epic action and emotion aptly depicted throughout. My gripes with the art are minor but most likely symptomatic of the artist's lack of time and the fact that the last Batman book I read was the beautiful All-Star Batman number one. That being said, not my favorite art, but for a $2.99 bi-weekly book, you're probably not going to do much better. Tom King's Rebirth Batman series has mostly served as a reminder of how much I love and miss the Snyder Capullo New 52 Batman run. It's not bad, but not on the level of the last run of the character. Though after the first arc, I feel as if Tom King has really accomplished something here. He's introduced us to some new characters and given us a really nice arc that he can use as a foundation for his own interesting Batman run. I wish the art was better, but it's serviceable under the circumstances. Batman number five gets a 3.5 out of five. So Civil War II Choosing Sides number four is an anthology book chronicling different viewpoints of the events of Civil War II. Issue number four features a Punisher story by Chuck Brown and Chris Visions, a Power Pack story by John Allison, and the ongoing Nick Fury story by Declan Shalvey with fabulous colors by Jordi Belair. Chuck Brown gives us a great little Punisher story here. It's quick, it's dirty, it's brutal, but the art is not what I was looking for at all. I get the style they were going for, but the color palette choices offended my senses. And the art did not fit the story. If you're a big fan of Power Pack, Maybe this story is for you. If you don't know anything about Power Pack, like me, this story isn't going to hold your hand or help you at all. I didn't get what was going on here. I didn't care about the characters. And while the art was pretty, it had no action going on. So, uh, big thumbs down on the Power Pack section of this book. Now on to the meat of the matter. Declan Shalvey's Nick Fury story has been the reason to pick up this title since issue number one. The fourth installment sees Fury go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Black Widow. Foregoing words, it allows the story to stand alone as a work of sequential art. Jordi Belair's minimalist color palette is understated and allows the line work to tell the story. It's beautiful, fun, and interesting. Number four was another lacking issue of Choosing Sides. But Shalvey's masterful work salvages the experience. 2.5 out of 5. Written by Colin Bunn with art by Andrea Picardo, Civil War II X-Men No. 3 is the third installment of this mutant-centric view of the war over preventative justice. Storm and her team are with Captain Marvel on this one, while Magneto fears that the Inhumans having Ulysses gives them an unfair advantage in the brewing conflict with mutant kind. In this issue, Storm seeks out diplomatic solutions with Medusa, Queen of the Inhumans, while Magneto reaches out to a powerful mutant we haven't seen in quite some time to accelerate his plan. Bun has a real chance to play in the X-Men sandbox here, and he's picking up all of my favorite toys. We get Sabretooth squaring off with Old Man Logan, Archangel fighting Storm, a little bit of a shit-talking battle between Phantom X and Gambit, we get Psylocke, Magic, we get Nightcrawler working for Magneto, and we get Magneto at his most convincing. I loved Colin Bunn's run on Magneto's solo title. Really enjoying Uncanny X-Men at this moment. And Colin Bunn really knows what I want 
out of an X-Men title. Ricardo's art is also on point here. The emotions of the characters is easily read through their faces, and the X-Men look like the X-Men should. My one gripe is that the action feels a bit flat and generic, but it's fairly easy to overlook when all of your favorite characters are involved. The overarching story for Civil War II X-Men seems to be shaping up to be a bit inconsequential to the event, as well as the X-Men continuity. But I'm still having a lot of fun every time I pick up this book. The art is solid, and these are characters that I absolutely love. I'm giving Civil War II X-Men number 3, a 3.5 out of 5. Written by Jeff Lemire with art by Dean Ormston, Black Hammer number 2 is the second issue in this new Dark Horse series. A team of Golden Age heroes is trapped in a rural town with seemingly no way to escape. And we're along for the ride as they struggle to come to grips with their forced retirement and their banishment from their own reality. Issue number two mostly focuses on Golden Gale. While Colonel Weird and Talkie Walkie are doing their best to find a way out of this predicament, Golden Gale laments over the curse of being trapped in a child's body. The issue opens with Gale's origin story, which is pretty much Shazam. As a child, she found the wizard Zafram, and by speaking his name, was imbued with all of his powers. But since she was a child when she gained the powers, every time she uses them, she reverts back to a child's body. It turns out whatever has trapped the team in this existence, this farm, this reality, is preventing Gale from returning back to her original form. She's stuck as a child even though she's a 55-year-old woman. Jeff Lemire is absolutely killing it on this series. There's a real Watchmen vibe to it, uh, watching these Golden Age heroes deal with retirement, not being heroes anymore. Issue 2 has us peeling away layers of the onion, revealing small uh, kernels of the plot as flashbacks show us these Golden Age heroes in their heyday. Gail's story here is touching as it shows her emotionally trapped inside a box amongst people who already feel trapped. Ormston's art in this series is phenomenal. The mundane, bleak, depressing world of the town and the farm is juxtaposed by the action and adventure displayed in the Golden Age panels. This mood is only enhanced by Dave Stewart's color palette, and it really feels as if the flashbacks are even done by a different creative team. This book is beautiful, the story is compelling, and the characters are great. And Lemire gives us a nice little nugget of hope at the end of this issue. I can't wait to pick up issue number three next month. Black Hammer issue number two, it's a four out of five. So just to recap this week, I was really into Black Hammer number two. Excited for what Jeff Lemire's doing over there at Dark Horse and uh, looking forward to issue number three. This series is definitely on point. Go pick it up. Uh, Batman number five ended the last story arc really dug that book. Um, Choosing Sides number four. I'm going to keep picking up Choosing Sides uh, even though I'm not really interested in most of the stories because the uh, Declan Shelby, uh, Jordi Belair, Nick Fury work has been off the charts amazing and I'm going to be excited to be picking that up. And Civil War II X-Men. I'm a sucker for X-Men. I'm um, going to keep picking up that story as well. Anybody who knows me or can see over my shoulder right now knows that I collect Marvel Legends figures. And during my recent hiatus from shooting videos, I have been picking up the X-Men Wave. The Build-A-Figure was Juggernaut. Picked up all the figures in the Wave except for Deadpool. And that was great for me because I could build the Juggernaut Build-A-Figure. Deadpool, I figured, Baltimore Comic Con is right around the corner. If I couldn't find him there, I'll end up paying a little bit extra for him and picking him up online. So I'm in Walgreens the other day. Anybody who collects Marvel Legends will tell you, Walgreens is the spot. Not only do they have great exclusive figures, like the uh, first appearance Daredevil and Namor, also an upcoming Punisher figure, I believe, they are also a spot that gets the cases and doesn't put them all out at once. I was in Walgreens the other day digging through some figures, found a really nice uh, Ghost Rider that I hadn't picked up yet, and he's kind of hard to find as well. So I get Ghost Rider, and the woman is in the aisle stocking the shelves, and she says to me, she sees me rummaging through boxes, she says, is there anything I can help you with? I didn't hesitate. I said, yeah, do you have any more of these in back stock? She said, let me check. Are you looking for one in particular? 
And I said, yeah, I'm looking for Deadpool. And she calls back and stock manager brings me a Deadpool. Anybody who knows Deadpool knows that he's highly collectible. These figures, there's been one of each in each case. And for some reason, the Deadpools have really shot up in value. I don't plan on flipping my Deadpool. I have opened him. He is posed back here. Probably can't even see that. But I was very excited to pick him up. Right now we're going to take a closer look at my Marvel Legends Deadpool figure. Drew Manchu back with another toy review for you guys. This time we're taking a look at the Marvel Legends X-Men series Deadpool figure. Alright, so we got Deadpool here in the box with all of his accessories. Nice Deadpool symbol right there at the top of the box. Picture of Wade Wilson there on the side of the box. Mirror image on the other side. On the back, got a quick bio right there. You can read that up. Nice little uh, picture of a Deadpool there holding a taco. And you see, Deadpool does not come with the Juggernaut build a figure piece, but does have some nice little hearts drawn with an arrow pointed to it there. Brick and fourth wall on the box of an action figure. Can't wait to crack this guy open and see what we got. And Deadpool removed from the outer box. All kinds of accessories here. You got two pistols, a knife, a nice uh, automatic shotgun, a giant uh, Jack Kirby, Rob Liefeld type of uh, rifle going on there, a bazooka with a boxing glove, two katanas, Two heads that are interchangeable and a fantastic taco. Yeah, Deadpool out of the packaging here. He's got some one hand here to grab his weapons. One hand here also with the trigger finger. The pink is out because he's fancy. Beautiful head sculpt on this figure right here. Got the furrowed brow there, one eyebrow raised. You can totally see. stocking cap action going on there. See the back of the figure. Got some nice uh, shields for his katanas. Holsters for his guns. Let's take a look at some of these accessories. Nice detail on the katanas there. Comes with two of uh, the pistols here. Two semi-auto pistols. Plain gray automatic shotgun here. Also plain gray on the rifle here. This doesn't look like Here. Uh, a knife, a taco, mask-free Deadpool head here, and the bazooka with the boxing glove. Boxing glove is removable if you think it looks a little too cartoonish. I will probably be displaying him without the boxing glove. Guys, I really, really love this figure. I have Deadpool posed here without his mask on, getting ready to eat a taco, holding his shotgun ready to rock. Uh, really love the posability of this figure. Uh, the options are basically endless. Both of his pistols, his katana, and his Bowie knife all fit securely in the holsters on the figure itself. Uh, really, really liking this head sculpt of the mask-free Deadpool. I think this is how he's going to go up on the shelf. Wednesday is my absolute favorite day of the week because it's new comic book day. Here's what I'm looking forward to coming out next week. A lot of killer books coming out from DC Comics this week. Rebirth is still launching new number ones. We're getting Blue Beetle Rebirth number one. It's a one-shot issue. With the start of two new ongoing series, we get Hellblazer number one. And also Deathstroke number one. We'll get to see more Batman and Detective Comics 939. Superman and Company starring in Action Comics 962. 
We'll see how the Titans handle Abracadabra in Titans number two. And we're getting Six Pack and Dog Welder, Hard Traveling Heroes, number one of six. On the Marvel side of things, I'm really looking forward to Extraordinary X-Men number 13. We'll learn more about the precog uh, in Human Ulysses in Civil War II, Ulysses number one. We're gonna learn more about Tony Stark's past in International Iron Man number six. This week also sees the release of Deadpool number 17. I'm looking forward to Captain America Steve Rogers number four. And Marvel's also bringing us Star Wars number 22 this week. Archie Comics is releasing Archie number 11. The series is killer. I keep telling you guys, get on board. Image Comics is bringing us Outcast number 20 from Robert Kirkman. And I'm looking forward to two great selections from Boom Studios, Adventure Time Comics number two, and issue number two of Sombra. Guys, that's a wrap on episode six of Drew Reviews. But before I go, I'm gonna share a little gem that I picked up this week. Uncanny X-Men number 129. That's the first appearance of Kitty Pride. First appearance of White Queen as well, Emma Frost. Very excited to pick this up. It's not in perfect condition, but the price was definitely right. And I did not have a copy in my collection. So uh, we will be hunting for a mint copy of this in the future. But very happy to have this in my boxes. So great week of collecting for me. I picked up that Deadpool Marvel Legends figure at Walgreens. Also got that Uncanny 129. I'm excited to uh, also pick up some great new books, read through some great stories. If you guys are reading any series that I am not letting you know about, please let me know about it. If you guys like the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Check out all my other videos. And uh, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.